Hi everyone. Good morning. This is Sarita from Hasha Trainings. Today our topic interview session is on agents, job schedulers, and queue processor in Pega. Let's continue our session with Hasha. Hi Hasha. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Shall we start? Yes, we can. What is an agent, and what are the advantages of agent? Yeah. An agent is an internal background processing requester which is going to execute activities uh, at the scheduled time intervals. Agents are being introduced in order to perform the tasks without any manual interaction on a scheduled basis. There are two types of agents like standard agent and advanced agent. Both of these agents are going to do process the tasks without any manual interaction. So processing the task without manual interaction is the advantage of the agent and each of these agents have their own processing capabilities. Okay. What are the differences between standard agent and advanced agent? Uh, an advanced agent is uh, meant for uh, processing uh, uh, like background tasks which are like bulk processing, send email notifications and uh, sending SMS and updating the database table records or even archival process. So like this it is a one time task that can be performed on the scheduled basis by using advanced agent. And coming to the standard agent, standard is agent is going to process the background tasks which are being queued. So standard agent functionality is little different uh, from advanced agent in such a way that it is going to use an auto queue management processing. That is whenever a standard agent wakes up, it is going to look up a queue table called PRCS queues and the queue items which are present in the queue table with status scheduled. The standard agent is going to pick each queue item and then execute the activity. After the successful execution of the activity has been done, then the queue item will be removed from the queue table. If there is any failure in the queue processing, then the particular queue item status will get modified into uh, like a broken process and the queue item resides in the same queue table. At the time of processing the queue item, the status is going to be now processing. And the advantage of queuing is the agent is going to pick up each item one by one and process and when an advanced agent wakes up it will process only uh, it will execute its activity only one time but standard agent when it wakes up per wake up it uh, n number of times the activity will get executed which depends on the number of queue items which are available in the queue table suppose the queue table has 10 queue items the activity of standard agent is going to get executed 10 times one time per each queue queue item and also the main advantage is like standard agent exception handling is being done by itself which means that in case of advanced agent if there is any failure in the processing of the agent activity uh, while processing or while executing the activity agent will go down and we need to find out the issue through the log files and we have to fix and manually you have to start the agent but in case of standard agent any failure the item status will be set to broken process agent will proceed picking the next item and agent will not go down and one more thing is like uh, the standard agent uh, is going to uh, pick the uh, look up the queue table pick the queue item from the queue table process it and performs deletes the queue item or update the queue item status and finally performs a commit all this will be an internal standard defined process designed by pega that's why it is called as a standard agent so here while dealing with standard agent there is no need to write the transaction logic only business logic if we write that is fair enough but in case of advanced agent we have to write both transaction as well as business logic and one more final difference is advanced agent runs on the access group that is defined in the agent rule form but standard agent runs on the access group of the requester who is going to push the queue item into queue table so that is if a manager and user pushes the queue two different queue items into queue table in a wake up standard agent is going to run two times activity these two times one time it is going to run on manager access group the other time it is going to run on user access group accordingly that is the access group of the requester who has pushed the queue item into queue table so these are the differences between standard and advanced agent okay what is the significance of access group and what is the access group used by standard agents and advanced agents in the agent rule form uh, under security tab we have to specify an access group it is not mandatory but still for advanced agent when it is running it uses the access group that we mentioned in the security tab and its significance is like access group is used to identify the respective application context and 
the activity from which rule set it has to be taken and executed that is always the uh, concept is same wherever we go and now coming to standard agent standard agent do not use the access group that we mentioned in the security tab of agents rule form because standard agent runs on the access group of the requester who is going to push the queue item into queue table for example if a requester like a manager and another requester like user each of them are going to push the queue items uh, like into queue table then while processing the queue item of manager the agent activity executed in the context of the access group of the manager similarly while processing the queue item pushed by user the uh, activity that runs by agent is going to run in the context of the user access group so this is how prpc is designed okay what is job scheduler and queue processor starting from pega 8 onwards pega has introduced a job scheduler in the queue processor where job scheduler is an alternate for advanced agent and queue processor is an alternate for standard agent so now agents are being deprecated from pega 8 onwards if you are being given with a requirement to uh, implement the background processing we have to depend on job scheduler in queue processor okay what is the difference between agents and job schedulers and queue processors yeah job scheduler as i told is an alternate for uh, advanced agent there are no much differences between uh, the jo job scheduler and advanced agent but there is a significant difference in uh, increasing the number of threads that we can do in pr config file that is a high level and uh, next one is like uh, mainly uh, we need to focus on queue processor or uh, like standard agent so queue processor is the one where it has been designed by its uh, for its processing by using kafka uh, broker concept so this has been developed by linkedin for processing their messages later linkedin has sold it for i mean like given it for free for uh, uh, apache and now uh, kafka is going to process the queue items as messages whereas standard agent is going to process the queue items like which are the database table records so processing messages is faster than processing the uh, database uh, table records and now the maximum number of threads that uh, a queue processor can process is 20 at a time where we can choose the option in the queue processor itself uh, we can write the value and more than 20 it cannot process because at a time it can have 20 partitions and messages in that each partition it starts from the number 0 1 uh, 0 to 90 means overall total 20 so on a one single server uh, if a standard agent is going to process only one thread, one thread let us consider as a work object, one work object processes at a time, then on one single server, a queue processor can process 20 queue items at a time parallelly, which means that in order to process 80 queue items on four servers uh, uh, by queue processor, it takes only uh, like uh, 80 by, I mean like uh, uh, 20 that is 4 minutes. But if a standard agent has to process 80 items on four servers like it will take 20 minutes so this is the advantage faster processing and also queue processor processing will be done by an internal data flow that gets created automatically when, whenever we create a queue processor the data flow is is responsible for processing the queue items okay let me ask one scenario a job scheduler is configured to send uh, one email every day at 7 am but the customer is reported like he is getting five emails per every day instead of one. We are uh, he is getting four du duplicate emails. What could be the reason and how to fix it? Okay, like uh, I think job scheduler here is running on multi-node environment where so it might have been configured on five nodes and at a time on five nodes the scheduler when it is running at the scheduled time, obviously it is going to send five emails. So the fix for this is very simple. We have to make sure to stop the job scheduler on remaining four servers and we have to make sure it is running only on one server that will send only one email. Thank you. Okay. Let me ask you one more, one more scenario. We have 10,000 records in a table. We have to process these 10,000 records to create 10,000 work objects. Each, each work object taking one minute time. So for example, one rec to process one record, it is taking one minute time. To process 10,000 records, it will take 10,000 minutes. But business needs a solution to process 10,000 records in very less span of time. From the question, I understand that in order to process 10,000 records, if it is taking 10,000 uh, minutes of time, definitely they should have done it in the background by um, like uh, job scheduler. The job scheduler is fetching all 10,000 records, processing each record in order to create a work object. So it is taking 10,000 minutes. Now, in order to uh, make it in, uh, to process in very less span of time, 
we have to use both job scheduler as well as queue processor. Then how can we achieve it? Like let's create a queue processor which is going to process 20 threads at a time on one single server and we configure this queue processor on four different servers. Now at a time 80 uh, queue items can be processed which means that in a minute 80 work objects can be created. Now we need to configure a job scheduler to pull all the 10,000 records from the table and instead of processing in the jobs by the job scheduler itself, let's take the first record and queue it to queue processor. Second record to queue to queue processor. Now job scheduler is going to do only the task of picking the record from the table and giving it handing over it to queue processor. Like this, job scheduler is going to take all 10,000 and give it to queue processor. It will not create any work of it. Now queue processor when it receives all 10,000 items, it is going to start processing 20 work objects on one single server and 4 servers means 80 work objects. In a minute it will create 80 work objects. So the overall time will be reduced. If you are going to increase the number of servers on which the queue processor is being deployed, definitely the time can be very less and we can achieve an efficient processing. Okay, let me go back to agents once again. What is the significance of agent schedule rule? Yeah. An agent schedule rule is a data instance which is going to have the schedule information of agents being created. This will be automatically created by master agent and now whenever we wanted to modify the schedule of an agent, there is no need to go to agent rule form. Instead of going there, we can open the agent schedule rule as it is a data instance, we can directly modify the schedule time and save it back. Then the schedule that is there in the schedule rule, schedule time that is defined or that is mentioned in the schedule rule is going to be used by the agent instead of what is there in the agent. Okay, let me ask you one more scenario. We have an advanced agent which is deployed on multi-node environment having four servers. While deploying agent, it's configured on India time zone 7 a.m. Now the four servers are in different countries. One is in India, one is in Australia, one is in USA and one is in Canada. And all servers, agent is running on India time zone 7 a.m. But business is expecting the agent on India server to run on India time zone 7 a.m. Similarly, the agent uh, on US time zone to run on India US time zone 7 a.m. Similarly, like Australia and Canada also the same 7 a.m. respect to time zones. Overall, the same agent should run on different time zones. How can we achieve it? Okay. So, as the agent is being uh, created in India time zone 7 am, when we deploy it on different servers which are there in different countries, still the agent will run on 7 am only because agent schedule rule will get created according to the time zone mentioned in the agent rule form. And now if you want to modify this schedule like US server US, USA 7 am and Australia server Australia 7 am, Canada server Canada 7 am, India server India 7 am. It is very simple. We need to log on to each server and open the agent schedule rule and modify the time interval from India 7 a.m. to US 7 a.m. and Australia server, Australia 7 a.m., Canada server, Canada 7 a.m. and then save it. Then accordingly it will run in the local time zone 7 a.m. That's how we can configure it. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video on agents. I hope you gained some good knowledge on agents. If you have any questions related to scenarios, Please mention it in comment box. We will try to resolve your questions. Please subscribe to our channel. The next video will be case management and parent-child parent relationship. Thank you.